Okay, so today I want to talk to you about sourdough discard and the different types of recipes that you can use it in. And we're going to make some really fluffy, awesome, cheesy biscuits. So sourdough discard is basically what is left over from feeding your sourdough starter and you can keep it in your fridge. Um, if you want more on that, I have another video on starter and it talks a little bit about how to feed your starter and then how to discard. So basically this is my discard jar and I kept it in, in my fridge. Oftentimes what happens when you have discard in your fridge is it will be a little bit thicker. And so what I like to do if I'm making a recipe that isn't going to be leavened, so if I'm not making something like pizza or nan or you know something that has to actually rise, um, I like a flatter discard. And the reason for that is because discard can kind of take on um, you know, like a leavening component in your recipes. And so while we do want that a little bit in biscuits for things like pie crust and cookies and those types of things, you want like a flatter discard, the flatter, the better. So I kind of took this out last night and just left it on my, um, counter and you'll see it's very soupy. So it's, you know, it's, there's really not a lot of activity left in there. Whereas if I had something like this, going into a non-leavened discard recipe, that would have a little more activity than I would like in there. And so sometimes that can kind of like get you into trouble. For example, with cookies, they can make it more dry and cakey, um, brownies, cakes, like those types of things. You really don't want a lot of activity when you're putting it into your recipe. Um, for biscuits, you can go one way or the other because we do want them to be fluffy, but we don't want them to be dry. We want more of like a pastry-like consistency. So we're gonna add our butter in and we're gonna do our layers and cut them up and that sort of thing. So I don't like a super active because I don't want fluffy, um, dry biscuits or cakey biscuits. I want fluffy, flaky biscuits, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna use my flatter starter. Another note on discard recipes is depending on the consistency of your starter will depend on how much flour you need in your recipe. So if you have a recipe for, for example, cookies or muffins, and you're noticing that you need to add a lot more flour to your cookie dough in order for it not to be super sticky, that might just be that you have a really, really soupy inactive starter. Same thing goes for things like biscuits or, um, you know, like any dough that you're going to be mixing up with discard. It really depends. The thicker your starter, the less flour you're going to use, the soupier your starter or sorry, your discard, the more flour you're gonna use. And that necessarily, that, that isn't good or bad. It just it is what it is with discard because everyone's is gonna look different. So for the purpose of this specific recipe, I like to take my, my discard out of the fridge, leave it on my counter, let it get as soupy and as runny as I can, and then start my recipe. So it'll smell really quite sour, um, you know, and that's okay. And you know, no big deal. I have other discards that are in my fridge that are a lot thicker, but I'm going to opt for using this one for my biscuits today. So that's just a little tidbit, um, on discard in our book. So in our cookbook for the love of sourdough, uh, you know, we have dozens of discard recipes in here. And oftentimes people will say, well, I needed to add way less flour or way more flour. That often is because of how your discard the consistency of your discard. And that's completely fine. It's just important to note, you never want to add flour to your bread recipes or anything that requires a leaven because in my other leaven video, so you can go and watch that, I talk about what you want your consistency of your leaven to look like when you're putting it into recipes like bread. So you shouldn't have to add flour to your bread recipes or anything like that. But discard recipes are different because everyone's discard is going to look a little bit different and that's fine. So just keep that in mind when you're thumbing through, uh, whether it's our cookbook or a blog online with different recipes, that if you have to alter your flour a little bit, um, that's fine. It's just because your discard is either too thick or too runny. So I'm actually altering the exact recipe in our book today and I'm going to teach you a different way of cutting them. And I have a, if you've watched my biscuit pot pie video, uh, it's sort of the same way that I'm going to cut these ones up, but it gives like a really nice rise and flaky flakiness in your biscuits. So, um, we just need flour, baking powder, soda, um, salt and sugar. And we're going to mix that all together in the bowl. So we're going to mix all of our dry ingredients together in the bowl, and then we'll add in just our butter and our sourdough discard and that's it and i'll show you how i mix it all up and add the cheese and i'm actually i'm going to add the cheese into the dry ingredients first so i'll show you all that and i'll show you how i cut my biscuits to make them really nice and fun and flaky all right so we have all of our dry ingredients in here and then i like to grate my butter so you can cut this into cubes 
um, to put into your butter. It's kind of like whatever your preference is. I like to grate it. Um, I feel like it's a lot easier to kind of like mix in to get that crumbly mixture that you, that you want for your dough. So I'm gonna grate it and then put it into the flour. So uh, when I have the butter in here, I'm just gonna gently mix it into kind of like a crumbly mixture. And then I'm gonna add the cheese on top um, before I put the sourdough discard in. Okay, so basically you wanna be able to kind of squeeze it and like break it apart in your hands. That gives it kind of its flakiness. Same with pie. Um, you're just looking for that break apart. Okay. So then I'm gonna add in our, so we have um, smoked cheddar and Asiago. You can do whatever you want. You can do just all cheddar. So we're gonna do about two thirds to three quarters cup of cheese in here. And um, again, you can do just straight cheddar. You can do like an Asiago cheddar blend like I'm doing. You can add in a different type of cheese. Parmesan is really nice in there too. So it's kind of like whatever you are feeling. Okay, so we have our cheddar in there. We're just gonna add in our Asiago and kind of mix that up. And then I like to go back through with my hands just to make sure that everything is kind of crumbly. And again, this is completely dependent on your start or on your discard. So we're gonna add in our one cup of sourdough discard. And that is either gonna be enough or we may have to add a little bit of extra, either extra discard or a little bit of milk on top of it, just simply uh, depending on the thickness of the starter. So you always do your flour first and you just, or your discard, sorry, I keep mixing up those words. You always do your flour and your dry ingredients first, add your butter in, and then you can kind of gauge what you need for your, um, for your discard and whether or not you have to add in a little bit extra liquid. Okay, so we have our discard in there. We're just gonna slowly start working that into the dough. So starting in the, the center, kind of moving out to the outsides and pulling in those dry parts. Okay. So we don't want it to be like too packed together anyway, but you wanna get in there kind of with your hands and make it like a nice cohesive dough. Okay. All right, so we got it on the counter. And we just basically want to scrape around enough that we have like a nice ball. And we'll start our layers. So the trick with flaky biscuits is, if you're using a biscuit cutter, is not to push it down and turn it. And the reason for that is when you turn it, it sort of seals the sides up. So it doesn't get that rise the same way that it does. So I actually do my biscuits differently. Um, sometimes I use a biscuit cutter, um, but what I like to do is I like to just roll it out, make the layers, and then I just like to cut them with a knife. And you can go straight down and straight up with it um, as opposed to twisting. And it seems to give a really, it's a square biscuit, but it seems to give a really nice flaky biscuit. Okay, sorry, that last bit didn't film. So basically what I've done here is you can see the layers. Um, I rolled it into a rectangle and then folded it in thirds and then rolled it back out. Okay, so now we have a nice rectangle and we're gonna cut it into our biscuits. Okay, so we cut that in half. And then I like to do like four biscuits on each side, but if you want really big biscuits, you could just do three on each side, but it, the recipe does make, but see how I can kind of go, just go down and straight up. And you can see kind of like the layers in the biscuit. Actually, so just down and straight up and we're not, twisting or doing anything like that and we're just keeping them intact so we have our eight biscuits all right so these are out of the oven and then what i like to do i just i melt 
butter and parsley and garlic and then just drizzle it over top or brush it over top and it just makes such a beautiful presentation and so delicious. Okay, so that's them there and we'll just open. They're so flaky and beautiful and you can like see all the layers in there. They're still a little bit hot, so you probably wanna wait till they cool a little bit more before you start um, breaking into them, but they are delightful.